Hi, Dan Fleisch again, and this video is about your schedule in college. If you're finishing up the part of your education before college, which we call high school in the U.S., or you know someone who's about to start college and you'd like to give them some helpful advice, I think that a bit of a heads up about the very different nature of the usual college schedule is in order. The reason I believe this is worth discussing is that I've seen far too many students whose college career has gotten off to a very rocky start or in some cases ended prematurely because they haven't adapted their behavior to take advantage of the significant differences between high school and college schedules. Here's what I mean. This is a typical high school schedule. Okay, it's very simplified and I realize that no one's schedule looks exactly like this. But the basic idea is that you show up in the morning, you spend the day doing what you're told and when to do it, mostly sitting in class, and then you leave in the afternoon. Depending on exactly when your school day starts and ends, this adds up to something like 30 to 35 hours per week. Now here's a typical college schedule. Once again, this is just an example, but it's pretty common to have some classes that meet on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, maybe a couple of Tuesday, Thursday classes, and perhaps a lab one or two afternoons per week. I want to call your attention to two things about this type of schedule. First, notice that there are all kinds of gaps in the middle of the day, and second, the total amount of time adds up to something like 15 hours per week. The first time I show a schedule like this to a new college student, their reaction tends to be something along the lines of, yip de fucking do Look at all that free time. I can sleep in on several mornings, I can take off early on several afternoons, and look at all that free time in between classes. College is going to be a doddle. It probably won't surprise you to hear that I think that's not the best way to look at your college schedule. Every week, those free morning, afternoon, and in-between hours can easily add up to 20 hours or more. And that's over 300 hours over the course of a 15-week semester. That's equivalent to a couple months of full-time employment. As you can imagine, if you don't figure out a way to make that time productive, you're going to be wasting a very precious resource, your time. So, why are college schedules constructed this way? One reason has to do with the amount of learning that you're expected to do out of class versus in class. For me, when I was in high school, I got pretty much all the information I needed to do well on the exams while I was in class. I'm not saying I didn't learn anything outside of class, but the ratio of in-class to out-of-class learning was about like this. Things changed when I got to college, not because I wanted to spend a lot of time studying and learning outside of class, but because I had to. And this ratio, something like three hours out of class for every hour in class, is what many college professors expect from their students. So where do those hours come from? Well, a heck of a lot of them are right here, in the free hours in your daily schedule. If you don't take advantage of at least some of those hours, you're seriously compromising your chances of succeeding in college. You may think, yeah, but what about evenings? Well, if you're like most students, you'll have plenty of friends who have tons of fun things for you to do in the evening. And you wouldn't be human if you didn't do that once in a while. But if you do it consistently, and if you don't use some of your non-class hours productively, it can't help but to push your study hours into the very late evening and early morning. And what's wrong with that? Aren't all-night study sessions what college is famous for? The problem with doing that regularly is that you are far less likely to study effectively when you're tired. And staying up late and not getting enough sleep pretty much guarantees that you'll be less than fully alert the next day in class. The good news is that you'll have almost total control over your schedule, maybe for the first time in your life, when you're at college. I say almost because I recognize that lots of students have to work when they're at college. But if your work schedule is getting in the way of your studies, it's essential that you do everything you can to change that situation. That might mean talking to your academic advisor, or one of your professors, or an administrator at your college, or even your parents. 
I faced this exact problem when I was in college and I was amazed at how accommodating the university was in helping me meet my financial obligations without overloading my schedule. But I can tell you that it really helps if you've established an academic record that makes the university think that you're worth keeping around. And there are some on-campus jobs, such as working the desk at the library, that may allow you to get at least some studying done while you're earning a paycheck. The bottom line is this. The person in charge of your college schedule is you. Don't let it get out of control, and remember that those before, after, and between class hours are a resource that you shouldn't let get away. So although I said at the start of this video that schedule is one of the biggest differences between high school and college, your schedule is really just a reflection of a really consequential difference. That difference is this. In college, you have much greater freedom. But with that freedom comes the responsibility of ensuring that your time at college prepares you for the career and the life you're seeking. As always, I appreciate your time. You should too. Thanks very much.